look at the species composition of organisms that have been living in the uh, water column or uh, above the sediments and um, when they dead these organisms like they sink or their DNA and remain sink to the seafloor and they become preserved. We're just looking for changes through time that can tell us a bit about the environment here and whether there was an ice sheet above or whether there was not and at which time these changes and transitions happen. There's only trace amounts of this DNA in the seafloor, so we have to be very careful of contamination. So we have a setup in this container where we can do clean sampling. And then, once we're done that, we freeze them. To put our samples into safety, we've built an underground freezer in the ice, which is here. So there's a couple of stairs. Uh, we need a freezer to keep our sample integrity and so they need to be frozen from the time that we're sampling to the time that we arrive in the lab. We need to extract the DNA from the sediments and then we turn that DNA into a DNA that's readable for a sequencing machine. Say we would have an environment where the overlying water column doesn't have ice. And so then we, we have organisms in this area that are phytoplankton, so they need light to live. And those are the signatures that we would expect to see. If we've got an ice sheet on top, then it's very dark. These light dependent organisms probably don't occur. Antarctica is incredibly vulnerable to climate change. So looking at what might have happened in the past with changes in community composition of organisms or ecosystems, it can help us to understand more what's happening in the future.